smallpox was a dredged thing from the 1780s. Someone found a way from taking cowpox and actually protecting people against smallpox because the cow, handlers of cows were sort of spared. Someone figured it out. We got a crude vaccine, not a great, a lot of side effects of giving that mm -hmm. smallpox. We essentially, even with a bad vaccine of smallpox was, are there any cases in the last 30 years of smallpox? I've though? never seen a case of smallpox. There, I think smallpox doesn't exist except in some, some laboratories. But, so in other words, we got, it was not a great vaccine because when you put this, these needles in the arm and you put the stuff on it, there's a chance you could have spread from that site a complication, especially if they were immune compromised or on steroids. Well, I think we were actually vaccinated for smallpox. I was, you yeah. were, but we know, we understand this. That's a vaccine with a lot of risk with it. Mm -hmm. We took the risk. We wiped out the disease essentially in the world. And a lot of people don't believe that. And the fact it was a little brought up when the 9-11 came up, they were about that maybe some of that laboratory stored smallpox in Russia or in here, someone got their hands on it, were unprotected. And that could get the hands of a terrorist was great concern. We might have to revaccinate the whole country. And somehow people got calmed down. They don't think it's out there. But that's a threat, a terrorist threat, not a disease wild threat. A terrorist threat. Is that true? Well, again, I'm not the expert on terrorism, but certainly if you have a, 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 if you have a disease that's gone away and most people are under 40, let's say, are unvaccinated, those people are susceptible to that disease if it ever comes back. They say if you had it 20 years ago, which is virtually everybody, there's no protection anyway. Usually the protection goes away. So, so in other most words, of us are probably not protected. So in other words, you could say vaccines have saved a lot of lives. There is a risk. There's a great benefit. We can appreciate people's concern about the vaccines. But you can look at the overall good. And I hope if anybody's against vaccines, at least look at some of the true evidence-based studies not opinions, and maybe we can have a better world and a safer world to live in. Is that correct? Well, I, I think vaccinations are important. I've had my children vaccinated, but you also have to understand there are these movements in other countries, too, literary movements. And, you know, again, I always talk about the English because they're a good example of a, a culture that has been traditionally, at least over the past 50 years, uh, kind of anti-vaccine. Uh, and even now, it's, it's, just, it's harder to get vaccines there. You have to go out of your way. We're here, we're giving influenza shots uh, free in a lot of places, at least in New York City. Uh, and you can go to a drugstore for $20, get an influenza vaccine. There, you have to pay for it and you have to wait months to get it, and it's harder. Um, so I think there is a difference of opinion, but certainly from my perspective, uh, I think vaccinations, for the most part, you know, again, I'm not sure about everything, uh, but for the most part, um, are, uh, are, 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 are a positive boon. Uh, now we're even trying to vaccinate against things that can result in cancer, such as uh, the Gardasil vaccine, which may prevent cervical cancer in women. Um, and, uh, I, you know, so there are new things coming out with this, and there's, we may even develop vaccines for that. There's a staph vaccine in research that might be prevent that MRSA that's all over every TV station every five minutes, another concern about it. And that was on the market. I think everybody would be lining up for this, especially if you had a kid playing a sport in high school or a wrestler or playing basketball without big concerns. And that might be out in a few years, and that's going to come up. Should we vaccinate, not vaccinate? But remember, that kills. And that's, we're not talking about ooh, a little 105 fever two days and you go out and you're okay. That's a very dangerous, unfortunate, resistant staph infection that's starting to spread in the common population. Well, you know, on the other side of the coin, I think one has to look at, again, I don't, I'm not, that's not my yeah. field, but one has to look at how often this, this infection happens and how often people die from it versus the um, potential risk of vaccinating a whole population. And I think that's the same question with chickenpox. I think one has to, you know, I'm still, I'm still struggling with a chickenpox vaccine, uh, and one has to look at that. Um, and I think that's where the decision is made, and I don't know enough about... So you have an honest the, intellectual doubt based on your knowledge, which is acceptable. If you doubt the good or the bad of a vaccine, we respect anybody's opinion, but look at evidence-based studies and look at what the better good for society is, is the right conclusion you should be for I think so, and I look at it from a neurological perspective, so it's easy for me to look at measles vaccines and say, gee, they're of benefit.